And welcome back. <laughs> welcome back to the NA Masters. <laughs> uh, I wish you heard the whole statement. Hopefully uh. you got hot mic there. But <laughs> welcome back to the desk. My name is Bach. I'll be your host. Joining me on the show, I've got Vansili Potter and Belly to break down the action. And there's going to be a whole lot of action as we're getting ready to jump into our lower finals. The winner of this will be moving on into the grand finals. Let's go. Face off against a incredibly powerful Sentinels team who has been lifted even a level higher with the addition of tens to the roster. And FaZe, who's looking to get back into that position, wants revenge. Because coming into that upper final, everyone was thinking, oh man, this is going to be such a great series. FaZe has got Baby Bay, and he's smeaking it like crazy. There's no way Sentinels can handle that. And then you get there, and Sentinels crushes them 2-0. So now FaZe is looking for that revenge, but they have to get through Gen.G. I, I guess right off the bat, Veli, how can Gen.G counter what FaZe has been doing? Because it seems few teams on, besides Sentinels have been able to do so. Bach, it's all about sentence structure, man. It's not how FaZe is going to get through Gen.G. It's how Gen G is gonna get through FaZe. Mm. We all seem to forget the dominance that FaZe <laughs> Clan had throughout every single series ex except against Sentinels, right? That's the problem. FaZe is still the top dog in this event. Now, Gen G, they've gotten better. We've been saying it all day on this desk, right? Yeah, they can counter and beat Envy. Playing against FaZe, you're gonna have to change your entire game plan now. That consistency issue I was talking about before, it's not gonna be there. Gen G's gonna mm. be well. But are they gonna be able to attack FaZe's entry the same way sentinels did that is the biggest question because you can study all night for envy but how much time was really left for phase clan yeah if i look back at phase versus sentinels and we mentioned it yesterday what really kind of stopped them on a map like icebox for example was looking at yeah. shazam with the operator and also dapper with the slow orbs as sage now that it's going to be gen g versus phase they still have that opping potential with win to stop somebody like baby bay to push a gristle via hit as he does but you look back at the rest of the composition here for the team of Gen G, they don't usually play with a Sage. So they yeah. might be a missing gap. What can it be? Can it be in the form of how Sean is playing as Reyna if it's going to go to like maps like Ascent again? Oh boy. But at the same point in time, did it feel like Sean's Reyna really was that good? Sean's raise actually looked the raise was good on, yeah. Yeah. on yeah. the last map on Bind. Yeah. But in previous maps, I wasn't super impressed with that. We'll take a look at the, the lineups as well, and also our players to watch across the series. When we watched that last map, one player that stood out big time was Mikael. And when you look at his competition in Envy, Crashies didn't really hit his stride. So when you're looking at Crashies, his counterpart on phase would be Rockus. If Mikael can keep that up, can Rockus match that out? But I know a lot of us are going to be keeping our focus toward, okay, can Baby Bay be stopped by Flynn? But let's look at the surrounding pieces. Don't focus on just the one. It's can everybody on phase be matched and prevented and slowed down? And I think there's other players we got to look at Good too, point. Potter, a player like Iman. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you just you just checkmarked every talking point right there. Is is absolutely <laughs> M Michael's clutching ability versus Rockus. And you know, Rockus, he's been on the up and up after uh, I think for the past week and a half, he's absolutely been hitting on all cylinders. And that's kind of what FaZe Clan needs because their plan B, we talked about it yesterday, as soon as Baby Bay gets traded out, he buys the space, but where are the rest of the FaZe members? So today, yep. I'm absolutely looking at those support pieces in Rockus. I'm looking right at Zachary. Is he going to bust out the breach, especially on Ascent? I think he leans towards that Killjoy a little bit more. But either way, I'm looking at the whole picture for sure because absolutely FaZe's aggression is their win condition. But when that gets stopped, I'm looking for that plan B. And we can pull up the stats here to compare those two players. Again, it's Mikael and his counterpart on the other side, Rockus. You can see a slight edge to Mikael. Potentially bumped up a bit there from that last map performance mm, as well. Wow. Stellar but very close in comparison to one another. Almost a direct duel between these two players, Vansili. Yeah, and even if I look at some of the research that I've been doing on stats too, the amount of Hunter's Fury that's been coming out of these two players just in this Masters event, you do have Rockus currently at four, but Michael is currently on the top above Crashies at 11. So he's been hitting those Hunter's oh. Fury. He's been mm. connecting those, and we've seen a couple of those actually in the last series versus Envy. And I think those stats went into that one too. So head to head, as much uh, uh, as much as uh, M Michael could actually do for the team in terms of his utilities, it looks like he might have a positive edge here. Taking a look at the maps as well, it's no surprise where 
some of this series is going to be headed. We've seen very little of some maps this tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, Split has not really shown itself too much as FaZe comes out and bans that. Gen G goes ahead and bans Icebox. No surprise given what FaZe has been able to do on that map in the past. So we'll be going to Ascent, Bind, and Haven, the same maps from the last series, just a little bit rough. out of order. Ascent wasn't really a good map for Gen G, so it's not going to be the strongest start for them. Veli, I hear you saying this is rough. You, you were a little rough. bit worried for the Gen G side? I'm worried. I'm, I'm, I'm scared as hell, man. Um, there, there's, there's, it's a thing. Like, you don't get in the ring with Mike Tyson. You don't go on a scent against FaZe Clan and Sentinels. That's just Bible, right? That's the thing. Going to the second map bind, I think that that's when Gen.G has a chance to make this a 2-1 victory if they don't win a scent. And the reason why I say that is because we just saw this team on Vine win often, man. The way they play so well and the way they switch up positions, especially on defense, that's when I think Gen.G might have a chance, but still, it's not about map stats and how they played previously. They're gonna have to actively counter phase. Or, you know, flip side, Devil's Advocate. Are they gonna implement a play style and force phase to adapt around them? Those are the biggest questions I'm looking at when it comes to this matchup. I think the question though is, can we actually get to that third map? Because if FaZe comes out swinging I don't and the know, sneak man. is in full effect on that first map, is there a possibility that that just rolls into the second map? Sure, Find looked really good for Gen G, but FaZe also got to watch that game. FaZe got to sit there and literally be like, okay, let's see what they do. And even though FaZe is notorious for just playing their own game and not necessarily worrying about what their opposition is going to do, there's still that opportunity to gain a little bit of intel and when you see the scoreline, you can understand why you might want that because that first half was so incredibly strong for Gen G. So now I'm looking at this series and I'm thinking, okay, if we can get to a third map, there's a chance. If. But there's a big if there. Vanselli, Vanselli, do you think that that is actually a real chance? Do you think that we can get to that third map? I think that we could get to that third map. If and it, you know what? I might have a hot take here that if it's a 2-0, I'm starting to believe it to Gen G. And even now, oh, okay. now that Envy's out, I got to go with my French Canadian homies too of Michael Wynn and Michael, uh, Michael Wynn and GMD, sorry. All right, prediction time. Veli, I heard you say a potential 2-1, but I oh, wasn't yeah. sure which direction you were leaning in. What do you got? You know what? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a 2-0. You know why? Because all these Counter Strike heads have been down in his <laughs> in phase this whole time. I approve of this play style. Phase Clan 2-0 is gonna be a rematch in the finals for Sentinels. Potter? Ooh, uh, I'm actually, I'm gonna lean with Genji here. I'm gonna go with Genji. I do think we're gonna go to all three maps, but this Ascent, I need Genji to come out with that bind energy. Whatever it was they were doing on bind, <laughs> bring it over to, to this Ascent. But either way, they're warmed up. I think we're gonna see a different looking Ascent coming out the gate here for Genji. That's silly. Well, I said it. I think it's gonna be Genji on this one too. You gotta summon that tactic bear for your Ascent game. And then hopefully we'll see a third map. Ooh. Bach? Tough call. Be honest. Be honest, Bach. I think it's phase 2 0. I, I would love to see Gen G take the series, but I think it's all going to have to start on Ascent. I think that if we want to see a big win here from Gen G, it's going to have to start on Ascent. But knowing what they just did against Envy, I think they're going to really struggle to put up rounds. Mm -hmm. I think that overall, Gen G will win less rounds in the first half than Doug's shirt will lose buttons progressively across the series. <laughs> I, I think Doug will have like three un buttons undone by the end of this first map. Gen G might have two rounds in this first half. We'll have to see Ooh. as the casters are standing by and ready to take it. I, I hope that I'm right to some degree, but I also don't want to see Gen G get slaughtered. We've got Doug and Sean, the big brains, to carry us into the action. Take it away. Ah, three teams remain, and Sean, in just a few moments, we're going to be sending one home, and we're going to have one other team punch their ticket to the grand finals. And I don't know about you, but I am very thankful that for series like this, we don't have to make predictions. <laughs> We don't have to, Doug. We don't have to, but I think we should. I think we should we should uh, assert dominance right now over over the analyst couch. Let's make some preds. Let's go. Oh, uh, you got to go first though. You, okay. You've got to. Well, this is good. It's gonna sound like I'm really biased here, but I'm gonna go Gen G two O. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's so obvious, right? It's so obvious. He's he's doing it. He has the bias. He has the bias. <laughs> no, I actually we broke down a phase vod 
on my stream a couple days ago on Ascent. I don't think they're that good on the map. I look at their last, their history on the yeah, map, bro. and uh, oof, you were bringing it up. Do you want to go ahead and drop that stat on me? Yeah, let's count how many times FaZe has played yeah. Ascent in uh, Masters. Go ahead. Zero. Whopping Kusek, they haven't touched it yes. at all. And on the side of Gen G, I know we're only we're, I know we're only talking about map one, but on the side of Gen G, other than other than the unmentionables that took place against Envy, it yeah. was pretty filthy out of Gen G. A 13-8 against Xset and then a 13-6 against Hundred Thieves. So Gen G, you got that that fire coming yeah. out of bind. You come into a place you feel comfortable with, and you might have a little something cooking. Yeah, and here's the thing. FaZe isn't the type of prep team that's going to do a lot of anti-stratting, you know, from watching yeah. these Gen.G matches. They might figure out, like, Quinn likes to play a certain spot and single him out, but they're not going to design very strategic set plays to single out, you know, a player that they saw a tendency in, in that last match. Right. That's not their style. So they're not going to abuse the fact that they could watch this last game. And because of that, I'm going to give... I'm going to lean into the team that's been warming up. I'm going to lean into mm. the team, you know, that's fresh off of these two games but i will say this looking at those stats from that last best of three win was zero and nine in opening duels on a scent and bind combined that cannot happen here if he falls down zero and nine to baby bay and co they're just gonna get rolled they're gonna get rolled yeah that's a bad day now let, let's take a hit a trip down memory lane here let's just think about yesterday right we don't have to go very far we saw phase really really get dismantled right and entirely they they looked discombobulated across a number of different points in the series sean if you could point to one thing that was the difference maker what was that one thing that sh that sentinels was able to do that exposed phase in their play style i mean it, it just seemed like they had a good enough duelist combo right a jet off unfortunately for envy they have mame on that off roll and taking the fights in that a side on icebox it just it isn't the same as when you watch right. someone like shazam move around and then he has daggers and he's floating through the air and there's so many different elevation changes it's just a different feel in the a side and i mean obviously when you have tens roaming around on reina it's, <laughs> it's i mean the storylines just write themselves right like i don't need to go any further <laughs> now, now tell me this because I, I think it's worth looking at the other side of the coin right for phase you mentioned that they're not known for their anti-stratting and they're doing mm. homework and I, I think that certainly is increased with the addition of trippy but but i think you're right i'd have to agree with you on that sentiment mm. with that in mind are you expecting anything different from phase relative to what we saw yesterday Mm, that's a good question i but i really don't think so i know yeah. in the past when i watched i mean we're not going to see icebox but just to show that phase has b hits they used to do a lot of b hits and then now they just switched only to a hits so they are they are capable of entirely switching their game plan like that uh but it's very it's it seems one dimensional like five grouping in one area and go and Teams that are capable of seeking out information, teams that have good Sovas, good Skies, good Cyphers, great Killjoys, you know, those teams really find flaws in phase if yeah. they move slow. If, so if you can manage to stall them for a little bit, just a little bit to gather that info and you can stack the site, you're in a heavy advantageous scenario. The problem is, is that phase is very fast, right? Mm. And they're running over the first defense from a lot of these teams they're beating, like Xset, Envy, those teams were playing way too aggressive on the choke points. Whereas if you look at Sentinels, they were making phase come into them. Shaz was holding deep lines with the operator, Mark peeking dry from rafters, coming into Zombs into the site. They made phase make mistakes as opposed to the other way around. Now you mentioned how important that Sova is and for teams that can gather information early and expose that, you kind of have to give them the nod or at least the tip of the hat in, in a matchup like this. You've got Mikael here on the side of Gen.G who's a very freaking good Sova in his own right, but do you think that he's going to be able to, to expose FaZe in the same way that Shazam was? I was very impressed with Mikael in that last series, right? It was like his coming out series as a player in Valorant. That one-on-two clutch he had on Haven Ooh, coming wait. from spawn. I think that was the momentum shift. I really do. Yeah. That propelled yep. Genji to win that series. Before that clutch, it felt like Envy was in full control. So I think he is riding on such a high right now. And that's part of the reason why Genji is such a live dog, right? They're running with this momentum. They have so much confidence. They're playing against a confidence-based team that plays loose. It's the perfect storm right now for Gen G to just make this finals.
Now, I think another person on the side of Gen G that I very quickly want to touch on is, is GMD, right? Has had, a, I mean, an incredible tournament. You even just look at the 100 Thieves series, right? Across both maps, plus 16, or 40 and 24, right? Against First Strike Champions, against a team that was on the come up after having that late roster change. But do, would you agree that here that one of the other very important parts of what has to click for Gen G, much like we saw against Envy a moment ago, was was GMD having himself a day. Yeah, here, I mean, here's the bad thing about Gen G, right? I look at their roster and I look at their matches, and in every game, it just seems like you know someone different has to step up. Yeah. Now, that's well, cool, but you just don't have that real star potential that FaZe has. I mean, FaZe has players that can just take over the game in Baby Bay and Corey, right? These players can mm. dominate the game, but. The problem with Gen G is that when I watch them, you know, Quinn has off games where he can't get the entries. Mikael has off games where it seems like he's not like, getting activated as much. GMD, same thing for him. He plays overly aggressive sometimes. You know, Sean has his problems on certain maps. Mm -hmm. Kusta has honestly just been banging everyone <laughs> since coming into this game. I can't believe it. He is such a ridiculously good Sentinel with so little mm -hmm. experience in Valorant right now. Now, I think on the other side, right, we, we talked so much about Gen G and we talked about the star players and how across the board it looks like somebody has to step up in order for gen g to click i think you've got a lot of players on the side of phase two that can do that and yeah baby bay and corey are a lot of your repeat offenders but mm. there's a whole lot of cook in there on the side of phase that can make some magic happen folks i'm being told we're gonna have to cut to a very quick break it seems like there are some technical issues going on potentially on the side of the players so we're gonna very quickly cut to the break get everything situated and we'll get back into the action as soon as humanly possible this just think of this as as the simmering of the pot right building up a little anticipation <laughs> getting you all hot and bothered for what's on the other side we'll be right back let me show you how the boss does it wind show me where to go what's this hey. one enemy remaining
guys thought you got rid of us? <laughs> they thought, Bach. They, you they thought, thought wrong. Uh, we decided <laughs> we're so narcissistic <laughs> that we wanted to spend at least another 12 minutes on desk hearing our own voices. So we're going to just talk. I'm going to delay pushing my start match button, which is down here. Yes. You guys saw it. I used it earlier in the week. Uh, I'm not going to push this until it's time. Veli, looking at this yes. series that we've talked about it a lot. We've amped Ooh. it up a ton, but I know you're the hype man. You bring the power and the energy to the desk. Okay. What do you got for me? What do I got for you? All right. So, number <laughs> one, I really think we're going to see a match of the ages. Man, I'll put some spice on that, right? Seriously. <laughs> I think that what we saw from FaZe losing the Sentinels, that matchup better that team in so many different ways they expose a lot of weaknesses and in order to get better you're gonna have to take losses gen g on the other end and taking a lot of losses there's players that pop off and there's players that just go missing on game day this gen g on the other end they've all come out shooting so when you put that together against phase clan the team where we really don't know what to expect yet i think we're gonna have the right match to see who's gonna go to the finals and face off against sito so Bach, my body's ready, baby. Let's get the game going. All right, this button worked really well for us earlier in the week. Let's see if it's working again. This time we'll try it. Let's get it. We push the button. Hopefully it's time to jump into the game. No, it didn't nope. work. <laughs> <laughs> but you got, like, the, the next yeah. best thing, maybe? What do the kids say these days, Doug? <laughs> Cringe. The Zoomies, cringe. Like Everyone in chat is just cringing right now at Bach. Just cringe. We're going to have to fix that button. We are bigger, bat we are back, and we're bigger, better, and badder than ever before. It was way too much at once. <laughs> now, Sean, I, I, I want to go back to something that you mentioned as we get into agent select. I want to play a little devil's advocate with you here. You mentioned that it seems like for Gen G, somebody has to step up and someone has to answer the call. And to be honest with you, that's been the case for every iteration that we've seen for Gen G, right? Like go all the way back to the initial roster. It seemed like that's what this team needed to succeed. And early on, they were cooking with grease, but I, I would argue that that's not necessarily a bad thing. No, it's really not. And I mean, comparing them to FaZe, I mean, look look at the look at the lineups that these teams are bringing out. They're very close, right? The key differences yep. here are Sean on that arena and Corey on the race. Corey has so much success on this race, controlling a main with a boom bot on both halves. His boom bot usage is next tier when it comes to ascent. That's one area that I feel like FaZe has a massive advantage in. But I will say, I think on on ascent it just seems like quinn will be the better jet on this map because it's very sp it's spaced out has a lot of cs fundamentals and i think he'll be able to shine in that particular duel and that's the duel to look out for in this series in my opinion we're gonna have some spice we're gonna have Quinn going up against baby bay i imagine we're gonna have some dueling operators and i think one of the things that you've got to look at as a contributor to Gen G success this tournament is that Win's been on one, man. Like when he gets that op in his hands, I know you mentioned that that less than ideal stat earlier. I think it was like 0 and 7, something like that. It wasn't yeah, 0 and 9, opening duels. Oof. Yeah, not pretty. Right, but if you think for, for most of the tournament, his op's been singing. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing is he's actually an incredible player. That's why it's so shocking when I looked at those stats and saw he was 0-9 in opening duels on Ascent and Bind last series because that's it's not what I saw as a viewer. I see him have tons of impact, being aggressive, you know, creating space for his team. And even though he he fell 0-5 on one of the maps in opening duels, you know, it didn't matter because he's creating so much space and he's giving opportunities to his co-duelist, Sean, in particular. Sean's cleaning up a lot of these rounds. Mm. Now, let me ask you this. We got to talk about the other side of the coin, okay? And I want to I wanna take a closer look at Zachary here, and here's why. Yeah. Out of all of the maps he plays, right, all five that are in the rotation, you get Breach, you get Omen on three of the five, and then on Ascent, the only place he, can, he plays Killjoy. We've talked so much about how influential he can be as a support player to really unlock the map. For baby bay corey and even marv but this time on, on the killjoy do you foresee Ooh. the same efficacy doug i i'm not sure about that but what i am sure about is phase is about to do something very aggressive towards this mid you can see three people gather at the top oh, i'm sorry gen g gen g going I, it looks like it might be a fast cat type of play i like this take some of the middle of the map away 
They've got some of that Killjoy utility early on. Coming out from Boosta, clears some space. Marv, yep, Marv's going to be the first one to drop that's in this lower bracket for finals. Sean, Doug. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Oh, that's going to hurt. Sean somehow gets another one. We talked about Reyna in a pistol round and how devastating she can be. Already cooking something up. Genji has lost Kusta, but the numbers advantage in their way. What else can they do? They're taking the middle of the map. They're going to walk right into Rockus and Zachary holding the back of the site. But they're going to take B for free. They are, but in this three on three, I think the biggest fight here is Corey versus Wynn in mid. There's no way Wynn is going to predict this flank coming so late. He's so late. Spike planted. Yeah, and then not having smoke well. All right, maybe oh not having smokes isn't going to matter. Oh, Corey. Yeah, Corey's going to get the timing. He spotted him, Sean. So there's info there. But I, it's so hard, right? Zachary's it's so hard down because to now health. Zachary is going to have to create some space, and yep. he is he does not have the HP to do this, Doug. Three on the swing. Way to take care of win. There's that space. The HP wasn't there. He drops, but Corey looking to put the round on his back. Already good for three. Down to 22 Ooh. health. Mikael comes up big to win the pistol for Genji. Yeah, I mean... You could see what Chen Ji was going for, and when they picked off Marv through the smoke, I think it actually confused them a bit. It, they didn't know how to approach the round. It's obviously a, a weird opening pick to get on a pistol round. So they kind of sent it up, Cat. And I, I mentioned it before the game, Corey at this A site, he is a sight to behold. He is going to just fight people coming up Cat and A main and win these battles a lot this game. And they were terrified. They ran, they ran back to B. They may have a little paranoia set up. Look at it, they're set up. There's the paranoia. The dash follows up, Baby Bay going in aggressive to try to take the space away. And we're gonna see this fight for orb control a lot, Sean, where they send they send utility, they send players to take that and hopefully get something going there. Oh, Sean. Oh, Sean. They initiated the mid B split, Doug. Such a good read from Genji. They sense the triple push aiming, but quick through a mid B split. Win holds the flank. And this round is going to be so difficult for FaZe to break into the site. Yeah, they're cooking. They also have guns too, right? Baby Bay and the rest of the FaZe not going to have the same luxury. Sean on the swing, showing us the frenzy. Although it got nerfed, it still hurts pretty dang bad. A flawless round for Gen.G. A round you expect to go their way, but that was pretty. Yeah, yeah, that was that was very important what just happened over at A main for the rest of this game because what happened was is Quinn just dry peaked it as a jet. This is what he likes doing at A main. He initiated the retake of A main from phase with paint shells, a paranoia, a jet smoke. There's so many things being thrown at me, he just dashes away and you know, they wasted all of that utility. Yeah. They wasted all of that. So he won a massive early mental battle by doing that. And you see already an adjustment made from FaZe. No paranoia set up early. Baby Bay not going for the swing. They do have full rifles while Genji is looking to ride this bonus here into the third round. And Rock is doing the early drone on mid. Zach is alone here at the B site. And I'm not sure what Genji's goal is here because all, all of them are grouped up on cat. Maybe a quick cat fake followed by a mid B split. There's a paranoia. You see the spike still hasn't really fully committed to tree, and they don't have a long control, right? Corey's hanging out in wine, so if anything tries to go that way, it's going to be exposed. But Guman, good for one early on. Baby Bay trades it out as Guman continues to go. But again, folks, keep an eye on Corey, Corey. in that spot. Spike Baby Bay, and a. there he is. Answers one the call, takes remaining. care of Guman. Baby Bay, good for three. And Kusta's left to one. He's got a bulldog, but in a 1v4, yeah, Baby Bay's weak. So, you, you know, you maybe get a frag or two on the way out here, but it doesn't look like he is even going to be able to get that. He's going to drop a 4K for Baby Bay. And when you talk about a player like Baby Bay, who, who really lives and dies by, by confidence, right? He's going to hold W the entire time. He has one speed, and that speed is go. That's big for him to get those kills early on. Indeed, yeah. And the Gen G players working up Cat. I think they were baited. They were baited, actually, because I think from GMD's point of view, he saw Baby Bay's gun. And he knew that Baby was backing off. He had an informational advantage, and they just, you know, it was an audible type play. He took over the round, and it just didn't pan out anything how they thought it would. Mm -hmm. All right, now we are back to a regular situation where there's going to be rifles across the board. You've got members on Genji, a couple of them, one point away from having the ultimates online. 
Meanwhile, for FaZe, we're going to talk a lot about the Blade Swarm. We're going to talk a lot about Ooh, the Showstopper. Look, look at this, Doug. Look at this, Doug. There's a drone coming A main right now. I think old FaZe would have bid on this, but they're not fighting at all on this phase. Oh, they're still staying, and at this point, they've got to understand where the play is. You see Corey start to rotate over. Win already good for one on the Rockets, but Zachary's still on the back of the site, right? If he's left alone, he can really anchor the site by himself. Or FaZe, he's got to get challenged. Sean's there. Corey with the Showstopper, going to bring it online. But he's zoned off so hard, there's really no way to make impact with that. Now he's gonna go, flashbacks himself, oh oh. still gets a shot on to Kusta. A big kill there, a 3v2 in favor of Jet The fight is down, standing. and numbers continue to go in favor of the attacking side. Corey alone here had some magic with the showstopper, but is now really out of resources. And he, I mean, doesn't have much to his name at all, Sean. No, I think this round is all the over here for Corey. But I, I, I want to say how good he has been at the Showstopper. It's something that yeah. I've been really disappointed mm -hmm. with throughout the entire Valorant scene. <laughs> there's not many good Showstoppers that you see compared to what you thought you would probably around Beta. I know there's been a nerf. Um, but Corey has so much success. He's so good at getting the shot off and then finding cover. He yeah. lives yeah. through the Showstopper, which is something I can't say for a lot of the other reases. Yeah, Looking another this is this is sketchy right now for phase mm -hmm. this is very sketchy early in this game being now 3-1 you know, the altar building up here for gen g Let's see win playing close b with these daggers he expects a b push out of phase but he's not going to get it here well they're stacked up and baby bay was posturing aggressively towards the middle of the map it's going to have to back off both blade swarms online for the jets here on Ascent, the Paranoia is going to come out. Rockus has been left untouched. He's in a great position to really blow this thing up. But the Cloudburst coming up, buying him some time. A great flank. Oh, Sean. That was dirty. No way. He's good for a second one as well. Rockus trades it out. 4v3 here in favor of Gen V. Enemy remaining. Oh. Wind just goes right by Zach into the site. Creates a massive opening. And now Rockus is all of a sudden left in a one on four. Spike planted. With the Sheriff, too. Well, all right. So Koost is there. He's good for three. Genji should be sitting very pretty financially. They've been able to really kind of have their way with FaZe early on. But again, it's 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 so early. That said, Sean, it, it's it's hard not to, to think about the series with Sentinels and, and get a little bit of deja vu here. Yeah, exactly. And this is a round where Corey has to be ready for this A main hit because I think based on how Genji is postured in the, in the start of this round, he's going to have an A hit to deal with. Yeah, so Kusta also has that lockdown online, but Rockus has the Hunter's Fury. We've also seen blast packs and shock darts negate that ult. So what would historically... Look at this, Doug. They're so smart. This is an anti-strat. So they know Corey's going to boom bot early. They just let that happen, get it over with. He gets no info out of this. He just knows the jet's there. The jet's been there this whole time. So they drone, but that's two people. So phase starts to rotate, and here comes the ult. Corey has, he goes down. The site is open. Oh, it was open, but May, Baby Bay, and Mark oh, show up, and they hold fast. Genji is dropped. They've been picked apart. Just down to two members remaining. Mikhail and Kusta now. Kusta does have that lockdown that we talked about earlier, but in a 2v4 here, the spike is down in the middle of the site. So it's not like they can it's not like they can easily get to it. This is a brutal situation for Genji. Yeah, things turn things can turn so quickly when you're playing this phase team, right? Marv runs through the dark cover, takes down two, gets himself on the scoreboard in the game. And phase in full control this round. It would take a huge mistake for Genji to come back in. Yeah, and it just went from, from a huge mistake to that freaking catastrophic one. Marv, they're good for four as they continue to pad the stats. You mentioned Marv going up big there. Baby Bay did it as well. It looked bad, Sean. It looked it really did. bad. Yeah, especially given the fact that when FaZe started that round, they were 1-1-1-1-1 split across the entire map, right? Yep. So when Corey died A main, the fact that they had, you know, three people there shows how quick FaZe was to react to the information that Corey gave them, right? They were very fast to rotate to the A site. All right, we'll see here, even with that round going in favor of FaZe, Gen G still has good again. money. Yeah, they want, they want to do the same thing all over again. It's the same setup at the start of the round. They still have the Killjoy ult. I feel like we're going to see the same strat. They're going to wait for the Boombot. 
here we have a little bit of a delay, obviously. But based on where Genji is sitting, the fact that Kusta hasn't put up any util, we could assume that the pace of this round is going to be similar. They're going to mm -hmm. keep they're going to keep up the pace. Now, with something like this in mind, knowing they have the lockdown, keep an eye on both Guimon and Marv. They have the from the shadows, and they both have shown. Ooh, willingness up. like they, they've shown complete willingness to aggressively from the shadows into chaos right intense moments and really kind of break things up so watch both of those players as well. yeah it, it does look like you know genji had some second thoughts there in spawn during that that pause they go back they're gonna go for a mid take here give up aiming control to phase and they're gonna get it this phase is not really fighting for it this round You know, Sean, I, I think with that, you also, there's a lack of information, right? They haven't, now they haven't droned up a long or anything like that, but there's, there's really no knowledge of what's happening down a long. Oh, that's a big find from the drone. They see Corey, who's typically the A main player. You can see the A players moving up closer and closer. This is definitely an A split, and that drone gave them lots of info. You see, they're just walking into A main. They're not clearing any of these corners. They're not using yeah. any abilities. They have a very good idea of how FaZe plays this map. But Baby Bay has rotated heaven, and run. I do not think they're going to be ready for this, Doug. All right, here we go. Here comes the lockdown. You mentioned Baby Bay up in heaven doesn't have an op in hand. But it looks like they're not going to have anything to counter that lockdown at all. They're just going to let it go. The paranoia comes out. As they get onto the side and face, kind of have to respect it, right? They just they just really have to back up. Turns already good for one. Baby Bay up in heaven. You mentioned them not being ready for it. And so far, that seems to be the case. As one drops, Mikhail on the flank. The Empress is online. Smoke's going up. As they still haven't been able to get onto the side and look for the members of Gen G. They're playing so far off, right? They have safety valves. If things go sideways on the site, they still sub have some of that in play. Yeah, and this Rena in hell is terrifying right now because she could dismiss out on contact. Oh, she's very awesome. scary having the Rena here. Oh, oh, there's the Rena, baby, they dropped down. Oh my gosh, they take the sight back. Beautifully, what a retake from FaZe, a 4K from Baby Bay. Unreal. Oh my goodness, I don't even know what that was. Baby Bay comes out of the sky, just skydiving, you know, doing tricks, free falling from the air, and lands, takes out the Reyna that I said was the one to look out for. Pivots around, gets two more. Unreal. Baby Bay. This guy is so exciting. He's so fun to watch. Baby Bay just went nuts there. And then Corey got in on the action as well. Those two players alone, as far as frags go, took everything away from Gen G along with the round. So now we find FaZe still one round behind. You're starting to feel some of the financial impact of the last two rounds for Gen G. Carrots, Bucky. Not a whole lot as far as early aggression goes, but Sean, look yeah. at how much they're taking up B already. They are, but Corey's boombox heard yeah, nothing yeah. A main. So FaZe has an inkling. Well, Mark is already off hat. Mark is behind him. Uh oh, we haven't oh, seen something like this. Lost. Yeah, we haven't seen a hit like this from Gen G. Zachary still on the back of the site. The Bucky's offline. Very well played. And now the cavalry should be arriving. Zachary was good for one more, but he eventually You mentioned the push standing. coming in from the other side. Marv taking Five care of Mikael. We're not planning. Oh! Oh! Stop, baby! The Red Bull clutch out of his mind. Oh my goodness, it looked like FaZe was doing everything right. They have the quick rotation. Zachary playing perfectly in the back of the site. But what can you do in these clutch situations? Genji has the similar style. They're willing to take the fights. And Kusta comes up on top this time, winning the one on two. Massive plays from Mikael and Kusta, the support players. Unreal. And then, you know, we mentioned Zachary in the same spot that Kusta just was, was in a great spot, and he equalized things back for FaZe, so it really went down to the wire there. Excellent response from Kusta. Again, Genji showing us a, a little bit of this willingness to at least show presence across the middle of the map, but, uh-oh. That's not good. No, Baby Bay already opening up this round. Quickly, a three-on-five for Genji. Giving up what they've, you know, blessed themselves with these this ec economic advantage. Oh! The <laughs> unreal and at that point you're fully overwhelmed right you've got all sorts of nonsense flashing across your screen 
very difficult to be able to respond to that. That's going to leave one alone. Now, the one thing, right, is he's got the spike, and he's one point away from the blade storm. So it's it's not. I mean, entire. I mean, yeah, it's hard, Sean. This is hard. Yeah, it's it's really hard right now for Huynh in this one on four. You know, he has no info. He's a jet. He has quite a few abilities, right? He has a dash. He has two updrafts. And if he plants, he can pull out his daggers. But man, oh man, would FaZe have to give him some one-on-ones for him to win this one. 30 seconds left. You know, maybe just get the extra credits in your pocket from getting the spike down. Maybe an exit frag or two along the way. Go out swinging. Yep, good for one. They are going one by one, Doug. They're doing it. Oh, that's just that's just the first box checked off the list. He's going to have to do a whole lot more to win this round. And Rock is swinging at just the right time onto his blind side. Never had a chance in that moment. Marv's going to get the defuse. FaZe are going to again bring the gap down to one round. Oh, I love it. I love the aggression from FaZe. This is that anti-CS style they talk so much about, right? They're in a, a five-on-three advantage. I, my CS brain cannot handle the fact that they're doing a triple B main push with, you know, baby <laughs> dashing out in the open in that scenario. I cannot believe it. But that's the type of aggression that works so well for them in this game. And that's why they're here. So I love seeing it. I, I do. And it's so exciting to see baby have this kind of success with it. 11 and 6 early on doing just fine for FaZe. And again for Gen G. Early in the in, in the opening moments of this round, we're seeing a stack towards B, the Blade Storm coming online. But it's very different from what we've seen in the past, Sean, right? Oh no, look at how far up Zachary's going and he's dropping the lockdown here. No way. What? What a psychopath! He's locked down inside B main. Oh, it was the bait! They had to go in to take it. Yeah, they're gonna get the lockdown, but they've paid a costly price as they've dropped two. Fortunately for Gen.G, they respond with two of their own. The 3v3 here is Marv is taking the middle of the map. Good for one, not good for anything else as Kusta responds. The round resets, the map resets as both teams hightail it to A. Well, if they let Kusta plant, both of these players will have ults. But look, both these players are baby base already here. Baby Bay doesn't bite, but it doesn't matter. Kusta gets the Rockets left alone. No, Rockets drops at the right time. The fight goes down. A little ring around the Rosie. And Rockets does it again. He's going to get the defuse. We're tied up at five. Oh, Doug, I mentioned those players would have their ult. I'm not sure if you caught that. Once Kusta got the frag, he wanted to put the lockdown in the corner. That would put a tremendous amount of pressure on Rockets in that one on two. Unfortunately, there was a gap in the Molotov. He jumps out, catches Kusta in the act. Oh, what a beautiful clutch from FaZe. Ooh, and Rockus went big there, man, to, to have the wherewithal to go in aggressive there after Baby Bay drops, right? Like, Baby Bay drops, and he just full, full send, just goes and catches the timing just right. What a play by Rockus. Now he has a Hunter's Fury on mine too, Sean. Yeah, I think this is where the game might slow down a little bit. We only have two more rounds left in this half, but you know, the, the economy is running out for Genji. The ults are building up. Marv has to be careful. Frenzy's in the smoke. Could be dangerous. Oh, the gun barrel! The gun barrel! And he mows him through the smokes. Marv, good for three. Whew. One enemy oh. Hunter, Hunter. Okay. So now, one round away from ending the half, now Genji's gonna have guns. On top of Last the rifles they're gonna be able to bring switch. in, they've got three really significant ultimates to work with here, Sean. Yeah, they really do. I, I think the problem for, if I'm being honest, the problem for Genji in this round is that Corey has his ult. And that yeah. kind, I, I would not want to go into the A site when Corey has his ult. Just how he plays, you know, around this A main with the boom bot, you never know exactly when he's gonna aggress with it. He might use it early. Oh, he, I think he's using it early with the paranoia yeah. right now. Yes, 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 he's, yes. He's going at wind. Wind's gonna updraft and be above this this ult. Oh. Paranoia, dash, wind drops. There's the showstopper. He does use it aggressively. Yeah, wind drops, but you already see Genji adjusting, right? Look at the front of shadows into the back of the site, but Zachary responds, reads it like a book, takes him out. Genji are completely at a loss here, Sean. Oh, Genji trying to get a little cheeky with an instant response from GMD. That does not work. But still, this I can fall. It has. We are now in a three-on-three, three, Doug. And this round is anyone's.
the Empress coming online too. That's huge. Mikhail's gonna get the spike down. Mikhail has his ult. If this drone tags someone, and Kusta has he's his. In trouble. You should run. Here it is. No Hunter's three on the other side. Rock has died early and isn't gonna bring it into the next round. Meanwhile, for Mikhail, certainly has that available. To invest it tags, deal some damage. Corey's oh, gonna get tagged up, but brutal. That's a long wait here with little time on the clock. They have to go. They're gonna have to go here soon. So far, Marv, good for one. But you're far from getting what you need. Corey gets it. Mikael responds. A one v one. Corey, Mikael, Corey on the tap. No way. He's gonna go all the way. He swings it to half. Mikael gets the kill. The one v one and ties us up at six. Whew. Mikael Switching taking sides. one back for the one he just lost against Raucus. Coming up huge. Everyone is, seems like they're in this game right now. A every player has had impact at some point in this match. I love what I'm seeing. Tied game. Everyone showing up. Biggest match of the tournament for both teams. We couldn't ask for a better scenario. Oh, man. And you can already tell. like That's just one half in the book, Sean. This is going to be good. And we've seen... Like, we've, we've seen a little bit of everything, right? We've gotten the gamut. We've gotten super tense 1v1s that go both ways. We've seen teams read the map and counter strat each other. And, and then we've seen things like this too, where just the, a fraction of a second. Had that been a bit earlier, Kusta potentially gets that lockdown down. It's, it's we'll delivered. It's delivered across the boys, uh, across the board. Phase Ooh, on the attack here. We're getting a mid B split. Gimond yep. here, GMD in the connector is gonna have two people coming at him very quickly right now. Smoke, he backs off the paranoia's there, not sure. Yeah, it did connect, that's brutal. He's a sitting duck there. Baby, baby, now we look frenzy. at Sean and Kusa to hold this site. Look, oh, I like this. slowing down. Yeah, and then look at what Genji have done. He's taking the middle of the map, but Marv. Snips it out. As Chaos and Fuse on the side, a 2v2. Wind drops, Kusa's left alone. The turret's there too. A third man on the map. In a sense, his face take the pistol. And I believe nah, they're not gonna get uh, nah, not gonna get the money. But an excellent pistol by face. I loved I love that. You said third player on the map. That third player won them that pistol. Because <laughs> we all saw the world where the frenzy swings, both those guys line up. And they both get taken down by Kusta. <laughs> He's done it once before. He would have done it there. That third man won them that pistol. Wow. That's incredible. All right. On the side of Gen G, nothing forcing up. You just have a ghost in the hands oh. of Win. Oh, it's going to be a trap mid play. It's going to be a trap mid play. We're going to see a brawl. Face showing a big blow. You feel some of that gun difference. Going remaining. from from bad to worse. Right, and I, I love, like, this is space, right? Sean, so, who's the one the spike is? The intent was never the spike. It was ne that was never the play. No, that was deathmatch. That, yeah, that's not even part of the strat. Like, <laughs> that's, the strat has killed them all. No one lives. No one lives when you play phase. No one. Oh, man, a two-round lead. We talked a lot about how how good Gen G looked after that last round, after the last series, excuse me, going into this one, but phase. Even though they came in cold, at least as far as the series goes, they look really good right now too, Sean. And, and do. Yeah, it's just it's like, a really this, good is, this is this is a counterplay here. Wynn is already playing in heaven right now as Jet. They know Corey's gonna work this A main. They're gonna give it to him with a boom bot. They're not really gonna contest it too hard. And they're just gonna have someone hide in A and and hope to capitalize on the sloppiness from FaZe. Oh dear, they're they have so much ground. They, he has Cat all by himself. Corey has Amin all by himself. Dueling Paranoia is all that utility was used, and then they pull off, right? Meanwhile, they're still droning their way into tree, while FaZe has already punted on that, oh, right? Like, they've so. moved on. They're taking the middle of the map, and they're going to go to B. Guimon already drops instantly. They have Again, Kusta! Kusta! Good for two. Wind drops as well. That's huge. Sean's left alone way sean now in a one-on-two the round is absolutely wild they have no idea where he could be the bomb is down right in front of him they have no choice but to come into him right now and corey just upgraded a weapon to a moment ago he had a specter but here's the thing here's the thing doug playing together like this against the reyna if she takes one of them out left. and dismisses it doesn't matter how close you are 
Your trade does not matter. Rockus is weak! Oh, Rockus! Oh, what a shot from Rockus. You, you have to think about all the things he has to clear. The massive advantage Sean is in in that scenario, audio wise, positionally. He has everything working for him. Oh, the aim diff. The aim diff. And remember, Sean, Rockus was weak. I think he had like 40 health. Right, he yeah. was supposed to be in, in that play. Yeah. He's the bait. You yes. go out there and die. Get in, yeah. find out where he is. That was he supposed to be up. Sean taking that frag, dismissing, seeing the next player, and knowing exactly how to play the one on one. But Rockus just cracked him. Cover going out. Sean aggressively taking the out of control, and Alarm Bot unfortunately gives that away. He's going to have to back up. Pistols on the side of Genji here while FaZe have a three round lead, and they have guns as well. You know, FaZe are in a spot here, Sean, where hey, they can really run away with this thing. They really can. This is a scary spot for Genji. They have no money. They're potentially giving up 10 rounds. But I will say this phase often you know, kind of stalls out on their attack halves. Have they changed? I mean, they're a momentum-based team, so the fact that they're early up in this half is huge for them. I mean, they need these early economic advantages on their attack halves, and they have it right now. And this it's is a very, huge plus. And this is very similar to what we saw a couple of rounds ago, Sean, where FaZe understand they have the gun advantage. They leave the spike back, and they just want to go in and fight. Marved and Sean trained a couple of trade a couple of kills apiece. Now you see FaZe. They don't have the same comfort that they had a moment ago. Now they pull back. They're gonna get the spike, and the oh, game Zaxon. plan has changed. Zach's in B, but Sean has pushed mid, and he could catch these guys right now going B, B lobby if he just looks, but he's not gonna look. Oh, wow. Ships in the night, they pass. 30 seconds left. I don't, think he's, I don't even think he saw the jet smoke tiles. FaZe gets this site for free. We're looking at a 10-6 game. FaZe in full control of the economy. A lot of alts built up on the FaZe side. Gen G is going to have to have some heroics in the coming three to four rounds. Well, now, now Sean, for Gen G here, you've got a buggy and a pistol, right? You've got nothing to lose. You could go for it. They could definitely go for it, but the problem is, I mean, the utility left on phase, these crossfires, the chances of them breaking in and, you know, winning these trade battles, it's so slim with the guns they have. And look at this setup. Corey's oh. also one point away from the showstopper, brings right, that yeah. online. Right here. Yeah, and this round is basically a foregone conclusion. Maybe you play for it. Well, actually, uh, you don't even really get exits down B lobby, right? They're just going to be able to funnel out market. And the defender spawn. So again, phase in a, in, a, in a round that should go their way because of the gun advantage. Play that very nicely. They did. They definitely had a really good plan right there. They let they let Zachary clear out the B site on an eco where there's tons of, you know, misinformation from the other team right they're making a lot yep. of noise in places you know where they probably don't want you to go like they, they're trying to make things confusing for you so they send zachary and b as a scout the rest of the team follows suit you know baby bay securing them out with the smoke tiles and once they were in the b side it was over all right now look at when spicing things up for us for genji he has an op bringing that into the into this round he also has the blade yeah. storm is Rockus going to early drone? That's the question. Is it an arrow or a drone? It's an arrow. That's going to be broken. GMD breaks that. Here's the drone. Is GMD going to break the drone as well? Ooh, the drone actually is not being sent yet by Rockus. So they have taken a main. Look at this. Corey has taken a main for free right now. And still holding down the middle of the map with the op. Zachary may walk right into his crosshair. Wait. I love what we're seeing out of phase here. What do you what do you hear, Sean? Yeah, there, it's so silent across the map. Genji has no B main control because the turret's there, so they, they don't know if they're B main. They hear this drone, they really feel the A hit. Wait, That's a big line. Oh, it's huge, and Mikhail swings as well at just the right time. The dart was there, and he backs up into his own smoke to stay away from the dart. Meanwhile, Curry using the showstopper. Find so much space. Look at how Genji respond, right? They don't get, they, they're not even in the same zip code anymore. They have to respect that. Wow, unbelievable plays from Genji. FaZe found themselves in a 2-1-5. Rock is in A main, no recon right now. And this flank, this is, this is everything. Enemy remaining. Everything goes in favor of Genji. And all of a sudden you start to think, like, man, that showstopper is costly, right? Like in a 2v5 there, that's not cheap. Oh, the little things. If you're a jet man at home right now, the little things that Huynh does on this jet roll. 
Uh, yes, this is a one on five. Yes, a flawless round just went to Genji. But I am going to tell you, that player inside Corey could easily have taken out two to three weapons. You know, That's a massive economic difference in a pro match. So, G so knowing this, updrafts to create massive separation and just put his crosser way in the sky. Yep. There is zero chance Corey wins that round at that point. Zero. That is excellent play from Wayne. Not able to handle the eye candy flying across his screen. Drops face still with a three round lead here. Genji bringing in a lot of the same weapons it had before. The operator still holding down the same area of the map. Oh, win. Nothing doing quite yet. Oh, oh this is a big fight. Oh, he actually got him through the smoke. But Sean is trading that in B main. Zachary falls with no B main control. The fast A split comes in when they lose B main. Great paranoia there from, from GMD, however, to kind of delay things, but they still take tree. And Marv is in a great spot, Sean. Good for one. Baby Bay drops one as well. It's just GMD alone and face swarm the site. They overpower what Genji had on there, and they take the 11th round. It's crazy. It's so crazy because you're watching that from Wynn's point of view and you're like, okay, what piece of utility is FaZe going to use to take him off this angle? Things are going to look really difficult for FaZe. They're not really doing a good job of pushing this offer back. And then Pepe just updrafts. He just updrafts. And just that one action takes Wynn out of the play. Then he smokes him off, swings around, gets the frag through the smoke. I, I can't even state how big that is from Pepe. That is massive that he just won that opening duel. And we talked about how how imperative it is for an operator to really be online to stifle the sophisticated speed. It has not been oh. a factor. And of course, as I say that, Quinn takes personal offense, responds with taking down Baby Bay. What a shot. This jet battle is a treat. I am loving it so much. They're going back and forth. It's so epic. Zach is going to get his ult and be main right now. That's what he's going for. He's right there. He's got the orb, and he. There, it looks like they want to fake a B hit. So he's gonna put his alarm bot down, recall his you alarm bot, run. put his alt down. And how does Genji react to this? They Patience. don't. They oh, I don't. love this too. Look at Sean. Sean's in a position where he can kind of hold fast, and then if he needs to back up, he does. Meanwhile, Wind's holding down tree, understanding that's where the play is. Look at the from the shadows from Gwan. Again. <sighs> Phase retreat, phase no, this A site, they didn't bite, they didn't bite, so they're falling back to B now. Zachary fell completely off of B main, he's now coming mid, this is totally unreadable. Yeah, now, but Sean's in trouble, right, left. because they caught one, one was caught in the lockdown, and they know that they didn't rotate out, so you've got to know that Sean is there, Here. when spots a gun barrel, he's only got 14 health though, right, this, like a good swing out of Kusta. This is the round, Doug. Or Zachary, excuse me. They're going in aggressive. Third kill with the op still online. 10, Ten seconds left. FaZe gonna get the spike down. A 4v2 again for FaZe. Kusta with that lockdown. If he can wrong. just get out to Boathouse. If he could just make it there, there's nowhere for FaZe to hide. Oh yeah, they're trapped. You can see Raucus. Raucus' goal right now is to not allow that to happen. But the paranoia, the drone, so everything is way too strong right now. So but they're not they're choosing they not to use it. use it. Yeah. They just get the kill. Corey's alone in a 1v4 with 40 health. Right? And Mikael might just be able to skip the dang thing. He's going to do it. Who's the swings for the kill as well? What a round by Gen G, Sean. It was, it was off the back of win. Going huge with the op, opening the map, and leaving face with no options, even with the fake that they tried running. The discipline from Gen G wins them that round. Oh, what a huge round from the Jet player. I feel like I just say that for both teams back and forth. The Jets having such a big impact at the start of every single round, which is exactly what you want to see, right? You want to see these Jets opening up the round. You want to see them aggressing, creating space for their team. And they're both doing that. Be careful here. Corey has the showstopper. Ooh, this is gonna be broken for when does Corey pop it and go right in? Oh, that paint shell. That hurts. They they're just gonna see it. They know. They know they're fighting for Amy and we're gonna go somewhere else. Very smart play from FaZe here. Tree might be open. I mean they've gotten all the way of cat here. 
And remember, Sean Marv is much like Mulan in that in chaos loves to from the shadows into the into the belly of the beast, right? Right into where the the meat of everything is going down. Paranoia, it's a bait. They're gonna bite. The paranoia was used in response, but the spike's still over at B. Yeah, this is this is very interesting because these cat players. Oh, is Marv gonna stick this? No, Marv is actually stuck. Oh my goodness, I was so close. And Kutha oh. takes out Marvin's spawn. The showstopper comes out. That is ineffective, but the rifle in the hands of Corey is. Here comes the Hunter's Baby Man's pushing him. Out of mid -mail. Baby Man goes in aggressive, and he takes him out. Get out of my he way. still has the blade swarm too. 4v3. Here as things continue to fall apart. Rocket should be able to get the spike down. 30 seconds left. Spike planted. All right, here we go. No lockdown here. Zachary's in a great spot. He's the tip of the spear. If that goes sideways, they still have the back of the site. And I wonder at this point if Genji just kind of played for exits, right? Oh, yeah. Just try to kill, like ruin economy. Yeah, this is a rough spot. Who does have the daggers? He could pop those here. No way. Yeah, that's very unlikely. He's gonna go for it. Sean is going for it. The mad lad's gonna go for it. One enemy remaining. Oh, and it was a bait for Jen for Guman. Hello, win with the up. 1v1 and Zachary catches him on the side again. We never had a chance. The operator's offline. Phase it match point. Match point. Holy cow, there's so many things to talk about this round. Marv with an excellent TP location with his ult gets taken out by Kusta, who's dodging Corey's ult through the window, simultaneously popping his Molotov in B main so that way he can't get pushed. Takes out Marv in spawn. That is an insane play from Kusta. That is incredible. And then you have, uh, I'm, it's all it's all blur. Mikael's ulting in spawn, <laughs> and at this point, I think Face stands no chance. But Baby Bay dashes into him and takes him out mid ult. That is incredible from Baby Bay. Oh my goodness, this game just keeps on giving. We're at eight twelve. Look at the buy from Whoa. Gen G. Look at it. And you've got Rockus with an op. Right, like you don't see this super often. Right Oof, he spots the turret DP main. That gives them an inkling, you know, no one's in B main. You can see they're using this info. They're rotating off of B a little bit. They really have a feeling this is gonna be, be an A hit. Gonna have to go big with the blades. He's gonna have to go big with the blades. Doesn't connect onto anything. Maybe Bay gets tagged up, he gets pushed back, the spike's gonna go down. Gen G with a gun disadvantage, looking to retake the site. Yeah, and the thing to look out for here is Kusta's lockdown, right? That's the only thing Gen G has going for them. He absolutely has to use this. But they're just gonna push him. He stands no chance. No, he's alone. He drops, wins left alone. No blades online anymore. All he has is a frenzy. Down to 40 health, the showstopper. You can updraft as much as you want, but you're not gonna dodge that bad boy. Phase after the loss to Sentinels, come out and make a statement with a big win early on against Gen.G. Ooh, that was an impressive win on the back of what they're best at, right? The individual heroics and Baby Bay, he does it again. I, I mean, I don't know how many rounds we pointed out. His, his hands were all over that game. His fingerprints, his little Smeagol fingerprints are everywhere, you know? <laughs> They're everywhere on that game. He had so much impact entering left and right and on that lurk to kill the Sova ult. Oh, man. That game just gave us so much. I cannot wait for the second map right now, Doug. And, you know, it, it's kind of scary, right? Because think, think, think back to the Sentinel series. Yeah. Sentinels played the series in such a way to where FaZe couldn't thrive in the chaos because there was yeah. no room for chaos. Sentinels I extinguished that before it even became a factor. Here, Gen G obviously like to play in chaos as well. I mean, you're going toe to toe with the the the, yeah. the team, really the innovators of playing in chaos, and and that first round looked real pretty for FaZe. It did. It did. I. I'm curious how Gen G bounces back from this because, yeah, I, I think these two teams' styles are so similar. So, yeah. so to lose to someone that has your similar style is kind of a punch in the face, right? Yep. Can Gen G bounce back from this? I don't know. Let's, let's find out. This is going to be insane. <sighs> it's going to be insane indeed, folks. We're going to cut to a break. When we return, the desk will take over. Stay tuned. Let me show you how the boss does it. Wind, show me where to go. One enemy.
enemy remaining. <laughs> <laughs>